You better not do it. They not ready. Welcome to Real Talk Radio. The show that says just because you don't attend with them does not mean that you're not in him. The him being Jesus. The show that plants seeds and water seeds, but God gives the increase. Let's talk about it on Real Talk Radio. This show is a continuation of the church folk revolution. Enjoy the show. Welcome one. I was gonna say why everybody's so quiet. Back to Real Talk Radio. The show that says just because you don't attend with them does not mean that you're not in him. The him being who? Jesus. Jesus. We like to plant seeds and water seeds. We go in the end God gets the increase because it's never about us, it's about him. So, thank you for joining us at this special time. We have gone prime time this Sunday because we want to hit this show called To Tree or Not To Tree. That is the question. We're Talk Radio. We, we, we're going into the Christmas, y'all, because today is December the 22nd. <laughs> it ain't Christmas. Christmas is, what, three days away? Uh, you know, on Wednesday. So we wanted to hit hit this topic, man, because there's been a lot of debate um, about should Christians celebrate Christmas or not. Debate, debate about um, the origins of Christmas, the paganism within Christmas, the commercialism, uh, the Jesus' birthday or not. So we're going to hit all that today, and uh, we have a couple of special guests on with us. Uh, today, or tonight, I should say. Uh, and this is your first time listening to Real Talk Radio. We usually come on at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. This is a special show. But today with us, we have Sister Tamara Mills and Brother Rob Thornton. And uh, we're going to chop it up today, man. we got a good show. Thank you for joining us here on Real Talk Radio. I will shut up, pass the mic, and let some of these other brothers Pray and sister, in. and sister, you sexist fool, and <laughs> and sister, and sister. So, somebody pray, please. John, you go ahead and pray, man. Okay. Father, come to your name of Jesus and thank you for another day, another opportunity to be able to speak to your people, to have uh, valid discussions that aren't taking place, and to just share the knowledge that we have and given the insights that we have with your, uh, with the other body, I mean, believers in the body of Christ. Lord, we just ask that, uh, that someone be edified by this conversation here tonight. We're not here to argue right or wrong, left or right, who's up, who's down. We're just here to have a discussion and to just bring out some issues that are not being talked about, but that shit. Now you can be praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, as John said in the midst of his prayer, this is not a conversation that's taking place on Sunday mornings, in Sunday school, or during the service, or even Wednesday nights for that matter. You ain't going to hear too many pastors get up and say, should we celebrate Christmas? <laughs> you're not going. You're not going to hear them question this, uh, and I think that's a great place to to begin the conversation with everybody here. You know, should Christians celebrate Christmas? Hmm. Knock it out the park. Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Rob. Yeah. I'm going to defer to the lady first. What you think, Tam? <laughs> you know what? I do. Um, I, I don't celebrate Christmas um, as it is. I celebrate the day um, I gather with family and friends. I know it's not Jesus' birthday. So mm. for me, it's not a day of 
uh, this is the day that Jesus Christ was born on. It, so I celebrate that day just like any other day. But it's a little different. I mean, the tradition is there, yes. But I feel that because I know that it's not his birthday, I'm okay because I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it unto God, not unto the pagan gods and soulless and whatever all these other things people mention. I don't even know anything about that. I really don't. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Rob? Like, um, no, go ahead, Rob. <clears throat> pretty much. I mean, Tam, I, I feel you. Um, mm-hmm. There is a lot of tradition, you know, involved in Christmas. So, you know, we're going to gather, you know, Wednesday with family just like we always do. And um, mm-hmm. and uh, so, you know, you got the tradition aspect. But I have to question a lot of the, uh, you know, said traditions surrounding Christmas. In my research... Um, you know, I, I'm not sitting here with a whole bunch of notes and everything. I'm just kind of going off the dome. But in my research, every single aspect of the Christmas holiday came from pagan origin. And starting with the fact that it wasn't Jesus' birthday, it was, however, the birthday of several pagan gods. You see what I'm saying? So we have to just – I mean. We have to question, I understand that we are free in Jesus Christ. We're free in Christ, and we're free to celebrate him, you know, and that's what it's about. It's about, you know, gathering with family and lifting up the name of Jesus and, 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 and celebrating, and you know, acts of kindness and everything like that. But, you know, you hear, you often hear people talking about uh, taking Christ out of Christmas. There's, a, there's an attack on Christmas. There's a war on Christmas. People are taking Jesus out of Christmas, yeah, you have that element of society that doesn't want Jesus in anything. So, yeah, mm-hmm. there are people that want to take Christ out of Christmas. They want to take Christ out of everything. But, you know, I, I've heard Christ, Christian people, you know, pastors and everything talking about, you know, we got to put Christ back in Christmas. You know, we can't take, you know, Jesus out of Christmas. We've got to put the Christ back in Christmas. Well, my question is this. Mm-hmm. Was Christ Excellent. in Christmas in the first place? We have to question no. that. Mm-hmm. He was not. Mm-hmm. So that's where, I, that's where I am with it. Okay. John, Jonathan, what y'all think? Okay. Oh, John. This is Jonathan. Uh, oh, go ahead, John. You the oldest. <laughs> Please admit that. Um, for me... I believe that Christians ought to make up in their own mind whether they should, uh, whether they will or will not celebrate Christmas. I think it's a personal choice between you and your Savior and, you know, your family. That's something you have to decide amongst yourselves. Me personally, I choose to celebrate Christmas. And like everyone else said, I understand what it is. I understand what it's not. But to me, it's not about, uh, it's about just getting together with family. And we always want to bad tradition to make it a horrible thing. Tradition is not a bad thing. What makes some traditions bad is when they um, cross uh, the true and living God, when they go against what he desires and what he wills. That's what makes tradition bad, when they keep you from doing right. things for him. So tradition in and right. of itself is not bad. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Um, all right, and I'm, I'm kind of with John. I believe each person should make up in their own mind. Uh, I'm of the mindset that I, you know, you hear the saying all the time, Jesus is the reason for the season, and I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Uh, for me, this is just my opinion, you know, it, we all know that Jesus was not born on December 25th. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's given. And so that's why I say he's not the reason for the season. I believe that we can celebrate him whenever. And if you choose to make December 25th just to celebrate him on that day, then you have that right and that option to do so. Because as you, like Cameron said, every day, you should celebrate him every day. And that's what I do. I celebrate him every day. And so for mm-hmm. this, I don't really celebrate Christmas because of anything that, about Jesus. I celebrate Christmas because it's time to get together with the family. Um, it's time to get together uh, and, and fellowship with my family, basically family and friends, that's really what Christmas is about to me. And that's just me in my opinion. I, I don't really celebrate it for the Jesus aspect of it. Jesus is the reason for everything, in my opinion. He's the reason for everything. When it comes to me, 
He's the reason for everything, not just this season that we made it out to be. Um, so for me, as a believing Christian, as a brother uh, in Christ, I personally I don't think there's nothing wrong with celebrating and in some of even some of the traditions, as my brother said. Um, but when you try to put those traditions above God, and, and I think motive has a big, uh, uh, your heart motive has a big uh, play, comes into play here. You know, what is your motive for what you call celebrating Christmas? I think that plays a big part in it. So, Elvin? I think you have to, first you would have to define Christmas uh, for people to uh, come up to it with their conclusion for what, whether they should celebrate or not. When I think of celebrating Christmas, I don't see it as a form of worshiping uh, the holiday. There's absolutely no way for you to get away from uh, paganism or things that are pagan. I think when right. people use the, the, the pagan argument, uh, I think they're setting themselves up to, to for failure because if you're going to not celebrate Christmas because of its pagan origins or some of the things about Christmas being pagan, you got to begin to evaluate just about every doggone thing in your life. It's, it's just impossible to be pagan-free living in this world. So uh, I, I stop. I, I say if you choose to celebrate Christmas, you choose to celebrate it. If you choose to acknowledge and look at December 25th as Jesus' birthday, I, I'll tell you you're probably wrong, but I'm not going to debate and argue with you about it. Uh, if you choose to celebrate that day, ha have fun. I don't look at December 25th as Jesus' birthday the same way I don't look at Halloween as the devil's birthday. I think it's just as I think they're just as foolish. I think when Christians get wrapped up in the pagan attack of things, uh, I think you set yourself up to have endless arguments. Uh, I don't agree the same way you guys said. I. I, I I don't like hearing taking Jesus out of Chris, taking the Christ out of Christmas. Like Rob said, Christ was never in Christmas. Jesus mm -hmm. was never the reason for this season. I think it's uh, borderline offensive for us to get all riled up about this one day of the year where we come together and love upon each other and give each other gifts based off of the good that a person has done. Uh, <laughs> and then the next day you turn around and you, you don't even have a conversation with half the people that you just celebrated with. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think also, I think Christmas and the way that we act towards each other is a very, uh, almost a mirror image of what you see people do every Sunday in church. Uh, the way they love upon each other and the way they celebrate each other on that particular day, Christmas, is the same way they celebrate each other on Sunday. But then Monday comes along, they have no conversation, they don't check in with each other. It's a very works-based holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, just what like, about it? uh, it's the same thing. They set it up to be uh, based off of your behavior. If you are a good person or you had a good year or if you treated people well, uh, you feel like you should get a bunch of presents because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were not good, we even use it on our kids or we have used it on our kids. Well, if you're not good, Santa's not going to bring you any presents. Mm -hmm. But you use this imaginary, made-up, non-seen, actual figure as a person to give you good and you wonder why people struggle with their relationship with Christ when they do the same thing. They uh -oh. have this mentality where if I am good and I do the right thing, God's going to give me gifts. And when he doesn't give me gifts, it leads me to try what? Try harder. So Ooh. I think it's very dangerous. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's, that's a, a great point, man. Mm. And I don't know how many people have ever really looked at it in that viewpoint of being Christmas being works-based. 
So you be, right. you know, yeah, y'all know the song. He's making the list. He's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's not. So you know, you better be good and do your good, clean, clean your room. Um, you know, whatever, be good, and then you're gonna get these good. good, good. Oh, man. And we that, that every day. It's our I walk did, with Christ. We got to be good, and God is going to bless us, and he's going to bless us. Mm-hmm. And I never looked at it in mm-hmm. that, 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 that view from that perspective. And, you know, Elder brought that up. It's very... into like uh let's let's just go ahead and say it like tithing for instance you understand what i'm saying mm-hmm. but really you can make a connection i mean because you kind of just did you understand w- without even really saying it but just as an example oh, absolutely. you mm-hmm. know you, you go to church and it's works based tithing is a works based you know yes. type of thing it's a, it, it, it's a religion inside a religion you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you, you you pay your tithes, and, and 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 the mind state is that you're going to get something in return. You know what I mean? And, and mainly monetarily, you know, or materially. Yeah. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of people won't admit it, but that's what they're doing it for. And and, and that whole you know Christmas uh, Santa Claus thing. You know, it's the same thing. And, and I wasn't even going to go in on Santa Claus. John brought it up, but Santa Claus is a straight up, you know, we, everybody, I mean, it's, it's a given. It's just like, you know, it goes without saying it's a lie. People, you know, telling their kids that stuff. And just like you said, you know, it may, it may affect their viewpoint later on in life. When they show up, you know, you know when, when, when they're told this lie, to, you know, by their parents, and if some kids actually, you know, figure it out, I mean, wait, wait, we don't even have a chimney, so what's up with that? You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So let, me, we, let me ask We didn't have question. a chimney. But right. hold on, John. Mm-hmm. Hold on, John. Let, 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 Tamra, let Tamra go ahead and give her point real quick. Okay, my bad. Um, you know, it, it's just, and it was so funny that she said that, Elgin, and even Rob coming back with the piggyback. My son just said to me yesterday when he was telling me what he had gotten my grandson for Christmas, he says, Mom, Darrell's been really acting out. He said, remember how you used to tell me and Jeremy that Santa Claus wasn't going to come and see us if we didn't act right? And I was like, wow, I did that. That was how I kept my children from acting out, you know, the closer it got to Christmas because they knew, you know, it's Christmas time. So my threat was, okay, you know what? Every time you do something, I'm taking a toy. Or I'm going to tell Santa Claus to drop this off the list. I did that to my kids for about maybe 10. And my kids are five years apart. So, I mean, I did that till maybe Jason was maybe 10. And he just reminded me of that just yesterday. And I was, and when I heard you say that, Elton, I was like, oh, my God. That's mm. nothing but confirmation for me because I did that to my children. And my son, Rob, here you go, is doing that to his son. And I told him yesterday, I said, Jason, mm-hmm. don't do that. I said, because now my grandson's three. I said, don't do that. I said, because what you're teaching him is is what I taught you and Jeremy. And that's what you can't do. I said, so you need to not do that. Well, Mom, you did it. Well, yeah, I did. But I was wrong for it. You know, and he even said, well, I see that you be on mm-hmm. Facebook talking about I ain't no Santa Claus and we shouldn't celebrate Christmas. I said, Jason, do you think Jesus 
birthday is December 25th. My son is 29 years old. He said, yeah, Mom, it's not. I was like, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. Well, what am I supposed to tell Darrell? I was like, he was like, what am I supposed to tell Darrell? I was like, um, you tell him that when you take all this stuff over there, that his daddy bought it. You don't say Santa Claus bought it, you know. So it that's just so weird to hear you and Rob say that when I'm like sitting as a mommy saying, Lord, I did that for years. I messed my children up. And they acted good because they wanted all their presents they wrote on their list. Wow. That is too much. Wow. <laughs> God is going to move. You know, he's going it, it, to I'm telling you. It, it, I'm sorry, Rob. Um, I cut you no, off, I'm, man. I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, we're, we're thinking the same thing, Elgin. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to pay my tithes, and, 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 and this this act of mine, this, this pious act of mine is going to obligate God to move on my behalf. If I'm good yeah. as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Santa Claus is going to do this, that, and the third. Yeah. You know? So, hey. I mean, uh-huh. let's flip it's not, it. Not let's flip it. Let's flip it. Hold on. Don't flip it yet. Don't flip it yet because, okay. Come on, well, like you said, when we do that, we kind of teaching them also not just the works base, but it's fear based. Yes. Yep. Oh it's my God. Not, yes. not for salvation, but for righteousness, I guess, or, or, or for reward. You know, it's, it's fear based. You better be yeah. good at else. You better not pass. You better not cry or whatever. You, you can it's stay right it. there, though, and, and, th- and think about it as your kids get older. And I know we're, we're kind of riding on this, this, this topic right here, this piece of it, but it's, I think it's so important. You can look at how many of our relationships are works-based. As much as we yell and scream from the rooftops about how good God's grace is, and most of our relationships are works based. We we don't. If somebody offends us and treats us wrong, how we treat them is based off of what they've given us. Very rarely do we give people true grace, and what grace is is not just letting them off the hook. Not just, you know, letting them slide with it. True grace is giving them what they don't deserve. That means if mm. they're behind to kiss or they offend you, you hug them. You, you love up on them. We don't truly do that. Even in our relationships with our, our spouses, our friends, our family, our kids. And I think when we do it with our kids and we treat our kids that way, that becomes a, a really big stronghold when they have their relationship with God because they equate their relationship with their parents to their relationship with God. So if dad is somebody who is, you know, always making them walk on eggshells and they can't screw up and all this, or when they do screw up, dad flips out and yells, they're going to feel the same way about God. So when they come into a relationship with God, they're going to have that type of relationship thinking that, man, I always have to do the right thing by God. Because if I don't, he's going to pull a rug from me underneath me. I'm just teaching you a lesson. You know, I, I just need you to learn this. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm glad to hear that. I want to get this fifth too uh, on, on the other end. We got a couple callers. And callers, we're going to come to you momentarily. We got that Shepherd, and then we have, I think it's a Skype number, but we're going to get to you shortly. So please be patient with this. Um, let me flip it because you have the people, we're talking about workspace and how people want to do these things. Uh, workspace can also be not doing things too. <laughs> So let's look at let's flip it. What about the people who say I'm not going to celebrate Christmas because I want God to be pleased with me? Man, I, I'm gonna be that, I mean, how does that, that, how does that <laughs> seriously? How does that fit in? Because you say I want to please God, and the way I can please God is by not celebrating this this this, this, this Christmas with the spirit with paganism and commercialism. And, and, and lies, talking about Jesus' birthday. So could that be considered a form of workspace? Because yes. workspace is not just what you do, it's sometimes what you don't do in order to please God. Yes, it can be. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to stay there. I want somebody else to go deeper on that because I think it's really important to please God aspect. What do you all guys think about that? When you hear people say pleasing God, I want to please them by not doing it or doing this, what do, you, what do you think? It makes me cringe, personally. 
Um, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's right. Faith pleases God. Faith. Mm -hmm. Not what you do. Yeah. Faith does. Mm -hmm. Because if you have the faith in him, then you will do things that requires you to have faith in him. To have faith. That's all he wants. No matter what it looks like. Yeah. yeah, and that's all he wants. You know, Elgin, you know, remember that was like our first, I can't stand here at the moment. I was all, I was all hurt and distraught because you would call yourself hitting me. I was like, no, what? But but then um, I rem you took me to that verse, and I was like, wow, that's deep because the faith that we have, that, that, that really encompasses everything if we think about it, you know. Um, so there is nothing for us to do but have faith because that is the only thing that the Bible tells us. That's it. Don't say nothing else. And with the Holy Spirit leading, you know, either you're going to do what's right or you're going to do what you want to do. You're going to be led by your flesh. So that I, I'm with y'all on that one. I used to well, not be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I pretty much agree with that, you know. Um, pretty much the... Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, 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 the faith aspect. Um, um, Jonathan brought up something interesting about, you know, it can also be what we don't do in the attempt to to please God. Um, I pretty much do agree with everything um, that you guys have said. The only caveat is that we may have to, for, for those people that share that argument that, that Jonathan put out, now we might have to start digging into the origin of some of these traditions. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, mm -hmm. some of those people may, you know, the people that, that hold the argument, well, I, you know, it, it, it's also what I don't do that um, is important to please God. I'm pretty sure that they have really dug in and, and done a lot of research on the actual, you know, origin and the historical aspect of some of the Christmas tradition. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So at, at that point, we, we might have to start digging a little deeper when it comes to that. And then, you know, of course, the paganism stuff will come up, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's only that's, – yeah. uh, that's where I come from with that. I, I feel you, and this is this is where the conversation gets really difficult when you begin to talk about Christmas, Halloween, when you talk, 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 start talking about celebrating anything that you cannot find a direct correlation in Scripture with. It gets to a point where people begin to look subconsciously at behavior, like what you do and don't do. Well, you want to please God, don't you? Well, don't you know if you do that, that's pleasing God? But then it has to lead to people, and I like to take people to this place. If it doesn't please God, what, no, I'm sorry, what can you do as a believer that makes God not pleased with you? And when you ask those questions like that, people are not ready to deal with that aspect because no matter how much we understand and know about the pagan roots, about Christmas, the days of the week, your birthday, the money in your pocket, uh, the calendar, all those things, Thanksgiving, all these things, no matter how much you know about the pagan roots of it, you have to ask yourself the question, when I celebrate these things, how does God view me? Is he upset with me because I celebrate these things? Is he not pleased with me? Is he distant from me now? Am I out of fellowship? Then you, that, those questions right there lead you to help people understand their identity in Christ. Because if you tell me that God is ple not pleased with you when you celebrate Christmas, i got to ask you, so when you sin, how does God look at you? Mm -hmm. Is he pleased with you then? Is he not pleased with you then? And we have to be able to deal with that. Because I think, just like Rob's, you, you did something wonderful when you tied it in to tithing. 
Because what I always say about people who still tithe and hold on to the tithing argument is that they do not have an understanding of the gospel. Because all you're doing in the tithing aspect is holding on to a works-based relationship, a fear-based relationship with Christ. You don't understand the gospel. No other way of putting it, no other way of sugarcoating it. You don't understand the gospel. You think somewhere along the line of what Jesus did, you played a part in that. You don't get Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. You don't. All right, let's let's get some of these callers, man. We appreciate your patience. Uh, Dad Shepard, Dad Shepard, appreciate your patience. Thank you for holding, man, and we're talking about uh, Christmas, man, celebration of Christmas, the pagan rules and all this good stuff. Uh, what's your comment for us today? Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for the conversation. You guys are awesome. And um, the behavior-based acceptance is really, really big because – it spans everything, and the, the gentleman that made the comment about he was a little reluctant to bring tithing in, um, everything is <laughs> connected. Everything is connected, no matter how small or seemingly invisible the thread is. That's one of the things that I love about being able to listen to these conversations because whether I think of it while I'm on the air listening or speaking or after I turn off blog talk radio, we can see these connections if we're paying attention, and that's where the deeper teaching comes because – if I come to the realization because of what you told me and you told me that's the realization I'm supposed to have, nothing has happened inside of Greg. I have to come to the realization on, on my own. It, the, the connection needs to be made in my own mind or it doesn't mean anything to me. So that being said, I love what you said. Living totally free of pagan symbolism is nearly impossible. And you made me think of this. It's like fasting from oxygen. It's like saying I'm not going to breathe. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Just, just some simple stuff, and I'm not picking apart the symbology. All I'm saying is, is this lends itself to what you said about it being impossible. The Christmas tree can be equated to the tree of life in Genesis. Do you see the powerful subconscious symbology in this stuff, people? Now look at the word Xmas, just the letter X. What the letter X is, is it's a cross. So when you say the Xmas tree, you mean the cross tree. And that's why this symbolism is so strong. Not only in Christian circles, but all over the world. And then I'm going to give you two plays on words, just so you'll see how subtle the symbolism can be. Picture in your mind writing the word Santa, S-A-N-T-A. An anagram for that is Satan. It doesn't mean Santa is Satan. It simply means they took one word, mixed a couple of letters around, and look what you've got. Another anagram is the word present. Write that word down. Serpent is an anagram for present. And there's several other anagrams in those words, but what I'm saying is, is the paganism is hiding in plain view. You don't need to be a scholar or a genius to see it. But does it really matter? No, it doesn't, because it gets back to what you said, behavior-based acceptance of tithing. And here is my solution to the entire problem of behavior-based acceptance of tithing. Let's just stop taking out mortgages on these churches, people. And then I'm going to go a step further. Let's just stop worshiping inside these buildings. And let's do it here on radio, for example, because isn't that really where the bulk of the begging comes from in the pulpit is to make the note on the building? And we must <laughs> expand into the parking lot, and we need to buy those two old dilapidated homes next to us because they're just falling down, and we need more parking lots, and we need to expand the kingdom. Stop taking out mortgages on these churches and see what happens to this behavior-based acceptance of tithing. Thank you so much for opening the mic. <laughs> As always, Jonathan? Wow, well, this is not Jonathan, but that was uh, amazing. Uh, very, very thought-provoking. I think I'm going to have to rewind that and listen to it a couple more times because he took me on a rabbit trail and I followed him and then he came back out to the other side. So uh, thanks for that, Dad, Shepard. I appreciate it. <laughs> It, it, it just listen to it a couple times, and uh, I do the same thing with radio shows. I'll go back to certain segments and listen. But, you know, when you guys open up the door, you bring, I come in strong. I can't come in weak. <laughs> we come in, you, know, you know this. Everyone listening and, and on the mic right now knows that when you come in with truth, you must stop apologizing to people who might not quite be in that 
that realm of understanding. It doesn't mean that, they're, that they don't know as much as you or that you're smarter than they are. Just stop apologizing and stop taking an hour to get them up to speed. Speak your truth even if your voice shakes. They'll catch up eventually if they're ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, All right. now. <laughs> <laughs> John, are you wearing the switchboard, bro? Yeah, yeah, what's up? Okay. Uh, that's, we appreciate you, man. Every time you call, you always have some words of wisdom, bro. We appreciate you, man. Thank you. You guys are Thank awesome. You. Thanks. All right. I'm just going to put you back on hold, bro. Uh, caller from the 111 Uh You are live. Uh, Where is that at, though? Is that in America? Go ahead, it may be a block number or something like that, or a Skype number. Uh oh, they call on us a block You are live. Call it from the Matrix. <laughs> Nico, is that you? Hello? Huh? Hello? Oh, this you is Kyron. Hi. I'm not calling you from the blocked number or a Matrix. It's just the way <laughs> my phone is set up. I have no reason to be fearful or afraid. However, I will say this hey, sis. about doing, this particular sis? issue. Hey, Rob, how are you doing? Hi, Miss Tamara. I'm just coming on. Hi. Hi. Hi, I will say this about the conversation as far as the work based. I think sometimes when we study the scriptures, we're not looking at it in exegesis. And when works, when I love my husband, I'm not working for him. But the fruit of how I love him, fixing him dinner, taking care of our children, that is a form of me showing him my kindness. It can be seen as a work. But as far as the holiday season, and let me finish, as far as the Christmas, Easter, paganism issue, if that's the, if that's the case, then I shouldn't say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Amen. But when you know better, you do better. And as far as I'm concerned, Christmas, Saturnalia, Tammuz worship, Baal Peor, it has nothing to do with the Most High, and it never did. My thing is this, in my allowing or respecting other people's rights to celebrate Christmas, Please respect my right to abstain. That doesn't mean that I'm afraid or I'm work-based or I'm fear-based. It just means that I understand that I'm not going to blend or have something that's syncretic in my worship to the Most High. And when you know better, you do what's right. And as far as I'm concerned, I have friends that still celebrate it. I love them. But in that, if they ask me and they want to know why I don't celebrate it, I can tell them from a hermeneutic, scriptural, and historical premise. But I'm not going to sit and say, well, oh, I'm, I'm just going to be fearful and I don't want to be work-based. No, I think sometimes we can get too caught up in semantics. And at the end of the day, when we worship him, let's worship him in spirit and in truth. And Santa Claus and all of the little things associated with this holiday, if you want to buy some gifts, just go get some gifts. But let's not try to lie and pretend that we're being so holy and righteous and loving when it's not about him at all. That's just my perspective on it. Amen. All right. Amen. Now, who was, that, who, was, and, who was that again? What's your name it's again? It's the hugger. Call it's Kyra. I, I hug Miss Tamara. This is Kyra. Hi, Kyra. Okay. Uh, when you Hi, Miss Tamara. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, the hugger. The hugger. Okay. The hugger. Yes, he hugs everybody. Kyra was in your always give hug side hug. Ask Rob about my side hugs. <laughs> Just an e, a, a, a e hug and a heartbeat. <laughs> yes, yes will. I will sure do that in a minute. So, yeah. you know, I understand, Elgin, where you're coming from. As believers, we have to stop trying to do something for the Father because if we look at what he did, he's done it. He said it is finished. However, when you know what's right, you do what's right. And for well, me to tell my right, children that... Right. I'm sorry, I didn't mm -hmm. mean to cut you off. But if we know what's know, right... Okay. We, okay. If we know what's right and we do what's right as far as Christmas, do we do do you do the same thing with other pagan things? I will say this, when it comes to the other holidays, I don't celebrate them, but I'm not an extremist. This is what I mean when I say okay, extremist. Sure, sure. I live in a Greco-Roman society. I can't get away from it. Monday is named for Mars. Tuesday, again, right. on and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Right. I'm mature enough to let you celebrate Christmas, be mature enough to allow me to abstain. And in my Absolutely. abstaining, don't try to act like oh, well, you're not observing Christ's birthday. Well, he wasn't born on that day. Let's be clear, and let's make sure that we're not playing semantic games. So when you ask me, well, oh, paganism, 
paganism basically at the root is idolatry. So someone Absolutely. watching a football game could be seen as a pagan because guess what? They're worshiping if they're not careful, a team. I have many friends that love the Cowboys, the Broncos. Yeah. I understand with, yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> common yeah, sense. I'm not, but do you see what I'm cussing. saying? Do you see how we can go down yeah, this route I, if we're not careful? We have to use common sense. And as many of us that have degrees and have gone to seminaries, we lack common sense. So I live in this world that is not of the Father, but I'm going to do what he's called me to do within reason. Does that make sense? It makes sense. It does. Uh, now, I got a question. Mm -hmm. this is Jonathan. I got a question for you, Ms. Kyra. Um, and, sure. and it's just, I agree with, with everything you said. I'll, I have one question, and, and, and it was something that you said. You said, when you know what's right, you do what's right. And for you, mm -hmm. not celebrating Christmas might be right, but for someone mm -hmm. else, celebrating Christmas might be right. So where is the, you know, you see what I'm saying? When you say when you do what you what know better, saying. yeah, and, and I think that could just come will, off and go like, I will like, explain okay, it this way. Uh -huh. I will explain it this way. I celebrate the incarnation, the hypostatic union of the Most High. If you want to celebrate that, do so. But saying Christmas is Christ or let's keep Christ in Christmas, it's an oxymoron. He was never there to begin with. And when you know what's right, I, you do what's right. So oh, yeah, we agree. But that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, we agree with when that. Say, when you know what's right, you do what's right. Mm -hmm. So to you, mm -hmm. not celebrating Christmas is right. To me, the lies associated with the holiday and calling it Christmas and saying that it's about the Father, those are lies, and I can't participate in a lie. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And okay. what's right is not to be a part of a lie. Okay, you know, can I, I want to say, I want, okay, I want to say this, yes. Okay, Chris, okay, now, two things, and, and, and neither one of them are rhetorical, but I'm going to put them out there. First, I want to know where scripture tells us Christmas is idolatry. Number two, if we know what Christmas, which is Christ mass, mm -hmm. that's a Catholic term, and that, that, that means that the, the Christ Mass, the Catholics believe that to receive Jesus, they have to eat of his body, which is a Mass that they have on December 25th. That's what Christ Mass actually means. Now, when we talk about winter solstice and those things mm -hmm. like that, okay, I, mm -hmm. I still, I'm not privy to that, but when I see people say Christmas is idolatry and, and that the scripture say it, I want to know where is it at in scripture? Show that to me in scripture, just like the tree. People say that's, that's, uh, it's in the scripture. No, it's not. Jesus Christ wasn't even born when Jeremiah 10 was wrote. No, but I mean, where is it at? I just want to see it. I don't, now, Kyra, don't get wrong. I understand what you're saying. But my point being that, I mean, if it's to celebrate a day, that's one thing. But if you're going around and talking about there's Jesus Christ's birthday, now, wait a minute, okay, like my son at 29, I thought I done told him it's not, but I got to go back and correct that. But once mm -hmm. once you know it's not his birthday, then, okay, then it becomes celebrating the day, you know. Th that's but see, all that's the thing. And I understand where you're coming from, Ms. Tamara, but again, for me, and I can't speak for anybody else, I'm worshiping the Father every day. So I don't right. need mm -hmm. one specific day to worship him. My life, right. the things that I say, my actions, that's worshiping all day. I don't need December 25th. I don't need Easter. So again, right. scripturally, I could take you to Jeremiah 9 and 10, but at the end of the, at the, end of the day, what does the Father say? Those who worship me, worship me in spirit and, and in truth. truth. And for me and mm -hmm. my household, I'm not serving no Baal Peor. If you want to have a hop, hop, bunny, Easter brand bunny, you can want to head and do that. But I'm not right. going to do that. I'm right. not going to do that. And I love my brethren who do, but love me when I don't. That's the issue that right. I see. Right. It's called a yeah. one-way street, True. but we need a two-way to have some communication. You're right. And it I can't. Agree be just one way and for me and my household I am not celebrating Easter Christmas Halloween because some things are common sense if it looks evil if it quacks like a duck guess what it's probably of the duck species maybe it's a mallard so for me I'm just not going to participate <laughs> and and at, the, <laughs> at the end of the day 
we know what's truth. We know when the Father is pricking our spirit, and maybe someone doesn't understand that yet. Then that's where mm-hmm. I come as a believer and pray and love them through it. But someone said Merry Christmas to me the other day. I said, you know what? I don't celebrate Christmas, but thank you for engaging me and giving me the ability to be recognized, and I thank you for the intent that it was given. I'm not celebrating Christmas, but I'm thankful that they acknowledged me as a human being. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, how I deal I mean, with people. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys, it's, it's unavoidable. You know, you, you started bringing up uh, Christ Mass and all of that type of stuff. It's unavoidable when we start trying to dig into the origins of Christmas. You got to talk about that stuff. It's unavoidable. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, it's so it's, sad it's, to me. As pagans, not to interrupt you, Rob, pagans sit back, and in truth, those who celebrate Wicca or the other belief systems, they laugh because they know historically, Saul Invictus, what you were saying earlier, Tamma, about the Roman Catholic Church, and Catholic means universal Mm -hmm. church, they know Mm -hmm. these things, and they're just saying, when are you guys going to tell the truth? If you want to celebrate Christmas because of all the other things, then celebrate it. But Christ has nothing to do with it, and he never did and never will. Mm -hmm. Let's just try to lie to people. And that's where that's where yeah. my biggest bone of contention is with the whole holiday is the fact that this type of conversation as we started the show off with is not a conversation that's going to take place within their local institutionalized church because right. they're not for one, they're not scholarly enough to understand the the, the origins, the background, the, the implications the intent of people to intentionally infuse the conversation or the origins with demonic or evil, they're not going to have this conversation because it makes people uncomfortable. But the reality is, of course it does. And and I would rather go to a church and the the pastor say, listen, we we understand that Christmas has absolutely nothing to do with Christ. and, And it's okay to have that dialogue and to say, hey, the grace that I have to celebrate is the same grace that she has to not celebrate. That doesn't mean exactly. that she's outside of the body or I'm outside of the body or she's better or I'm better. It just means that for her and the way she chooses to do it, she chooses not to celebrate. She has that right. And I love her for right. that right. Now let's go get some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yard? <laughs> I mean, I like fried chicken. I'm good with it. We all eat that. We eat on the same. I like bacon. Yeah. I'm watching my blood pressure. I'm watching blood there pressure. There she goes. Yeah, there she goes. That, there she goes. That's twice the show. She gotta, gotta go against the brain. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> let, let me let me <laughs> add this in. Let me add this in, and and this is a uh, a question for Tyra. Um, yes. Now we said you said you celebrate Jesus year round, every day. And, yes. that, and we should celebrate Jesus every day. So why should we exclude December 25th as a day mm. to celebrate him um, because, because of all the negative stuff going on with it, all the stuff that we know that's pagan and that's wrong about it? Mm-hmm. Should we or why should we exclude that day as a day to worship or celebrate him? Or should we even do well, that? Well, my I can tell you why we exclude it when I'm teaching my children truth. I can't give my version of truth. I can't give Tamara's version of truth. There is truth. And when I go back to scripture, not my opinion, but scripture, it says those who worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. Saturnalia, celebrated on December 17th, was instituted by the pagan Roman council of that time. With Roman Catholicism and the the um, how can I say this, the syncretism again of the Roman Catholic Church, mm-hmm. they blended that to bring people into what is called the church. The ecclesia and the church are two different things in another conversation altogether. However, I will say this. Mm-hmm. When you do that, when you try to become popular and you're trying to win people to yourself, not to the Father, you will compromise. So to me, as a believer, I don't want to have any leaven spoiling my lump. And when I've studied this history, when I have done the investigative research, I can't in good conscience do it. Now, 
for the other person who has not come to that understanding, reading and researching and understanding, that's when you have to have compassion. And even if they do research and continue to do it, that's a heart issue. When the father deals with I you about disagree. something, then you have to listen to when he calls you. But I'm not the Holy Spirit. I am a child of the Most High. I love him dearly, and I want to do what he's called me to do. And when I did the research, my husband and I, he made the decision as the head. I followed, and as I researched more, I don't want to celebrate it because I don't need to because when I look at the Father and what he's done, that alone is enough to praise him. So December 25th, December 26th, all of the days are his anyways. But if we're talking about truthful, let's not lie and say it's about Christ. Because, again, not to be repetitive, Amen. it's not about him. It's not, it's not about him. Amen. We we're, we're agree. Yeah, you brought up something uh, interesting um, when you're talking about syncretism. Um, yes. And the, and the Catholic Church and... The fact that it's known as the universal church, well, what are they mm -hmm. doing? Tamara, you and I talk about this a lot. What, what's the Catholic Church doing right now with ecumenism? It's, oh, they've Jesus. been doing this since day one. They've been doing this since yep. day one with, with what we're That's talking fine. about, with the, the very thing That's we're fine. talking about. The Catholic Church has been doing this since day one. They, they were uniting. They were trying to unite christianity with paganism so they, they tried to christianize mm -hmm. they actually did and they didn't try they did it they christianized mm -hmm. pagan here we have stuff like christmas you understand what i'm saying we have um you know all of this stuff revolving around sun worship we have i mean this rat this rat hole goes deep. i mean we have uh worship on sundays instead of saturdays and all of that type of mm -hmm. stuff i mean all of the Days of the week named after pagan gods. I mean, it goes very deep. The Catholic Church has done a number. It's done a real number, and it's on the wrong side of history when it comes to Christianity. You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, when you talk about you talk about syncretism, and you talk about the, the universal, I got my, my finger quotes up. Catholic Church. It's because they've been doing that since day one, and right now, to this day, they're trying to unite all the religions. So, I mean, it, it, go, it goes very deep. That's why it I goes deep, man. That's why I said earlier when we, when we start talking about it, it's unavoidable that we, you know, we, we, we can't talk, we, can't, we cannot avoid talking about stuff like Saturnalia and the origins of it. I mean, I understand, I, I, I'm in agreement with everybody, but Kyra, I understand where you're coming from. It's I appreciate that, Rob. Yeah, it's unavoidable mm -hmm. that we, we got to talk about the origins of this stuff. Okay. And, you know, well, sis, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, well, Kyra, we thank you for no. calling in, sis. We appreciate oh, well, point of view. thank you for having and me. I, I love the fact that you were able to bring that perspective in. It was much needed, and we knew at some point in time we were going to get here. Yeah. Oh, well, That's I love my brothers dialogue. and sisters. And, I think, and, you know, I will say this before I get off and I listen to the rest of the conversation. I love my brothers and sisters in the faith. And I have come to a point in my life where I don't have to push anything. The scriptures say if we lift him up, then all men will be drawn unto him. Drawn At the end of the day, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. And so many times we're so busy trying to prove a point that it gets lost in translation. The Messiah has to be the central figure in all of our lives. And for me... That's my walk, and I know it's yours as well. And Christmas, like I said, for those who celebrate it, let it be so. But for me and my household, don't crit critique me because I choose to abstain. And like I said, I've had people call me all kinds of things, Beelzebub, all kinds of stuff because I don't celebrate it. And that's where I'm saying if we're going to give grace, let it be both ways, not just one way. Absolutely. And we call you sister. So. And I know you that I love voice. my brothers and sisters in the faith. That's why I said I love my brothers and sisters in the faith, because like I said, there are people, and I call it evangelical churchianity. There's a difference. So. Mm. <laughs> you all aren't in that, so love you all. Hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, I, Kyra. I, 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 know, I know one thing. She ain't going to bring no baked chicken up on this dog on show no more. I know that. <laughs> she <gonna> bring <laughs> I don't care what she say. Brother and sister, Keep your big chicken. 
She was just on the fried chicken bandwagon, and now all of a sudden she just hopped up with the fried chicken. All right, so let me, let me ask you a question. Oh, here he comes. Because you always uh, ask me two questions. I'm question. What do Go you ahead. tell young children about Santa Claus and Christ? What do you tell a young child about that? Your, your nephew, your niece, your, your, your son or daughter, your grandchild, what, mm. what do you tell them? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Most people know me and what I think keep me away from their kids. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Listen, your mama and daddy, they Santa. You ain't never had a chimney. Where's Santa coming from? <laughs> right. But you're, little kids don't think like that. Age. I'm talking about little bitty kids. <laughs> All those kids that can critically think, yeah, we ain't got no chimney. Santa Claus coming down the chimney. Little bitty kids don't think listen, like that. Listen, man, I, I, I'm in. <laughs> I know we're laughing a man facetious at the moment, but I'm I'm so serious. From an early age, I am telling them the truth in a way that they can receive the truth. I'm not I, I'm doing my best not to allow them to fall into a position where they are living a perpetual lie. I, I'm not going to turn it into this thing where you know they don't have to worship it. I'm I'm explaining to them. Okay, now listen. On the level that they can understand, in a way they can understand, listen, it's it's not, there's no Santa, there, there's not, you know, all these things. It's okay to have fun with it. And as they get older, we can have a further dialogue down the line where I explain to them in more in depth the origins and all those things. And again, allowing them as a believer to decide whether they choose to celebrate it or not. But I, I'm never going to be on, for me, I'm never going to be on some, well, you know, hey, Santa be through, he comes through the back door, we leave it unlocked and the cookies and all that. No, I didn't do that with my own daughter. You know what I mean? I didn't, I wasn't on, there is no Santa just ripping it out of her hands either because I understand the peer pressure that she was going to be dealing with when she went to school functions and all these things, but I had to educate her and let her understand some things in a way that it was, oh, she was able to digest. That's how I did it. I wouldn't tell a kid that, you know, yeah, there's a Santa. I don't, I don't think that's good for them. But the same thing with Halloween. I'm like, yo, I'm not allowing them to be in a situation with Halloween where they feel like, hey, Halloween is such a great day. But I'm not even at the same time on the other end of it saying, oh, Halloween is such a bad day. I'm educating them to allow them as a believer to allow the spirit to do the same thing he does in my life, which is lead and guide them in all truth. Mm -hmm. That was your Okay. Okay. This is right. Um, I had a situation where my, my grandson is two and a half, and I was talking to his dad, and I asked him, what are you going to tell him about Christmas and uh, Santa Claus and stuff like that? And he was a little hesitant. You know, he really didn't know what to deal with, and he asked me what I thought. And uh, I basically gave him the same speech as Elgin did, um, but I was just like, um, ask him what he likes. Like, we like to play pretend. The Santa Claus is pretend, just like SpongeBob is pretend. Just like uh, the, the Yo Gabba Gabba is all pretend. It's all pretend. It's, it's not real. It's pretend. Santa Claus is pretend. Christ is real. Santa Claus is pretend. And I, and I think that when we... I think when we don't take advantage of those type of questions to uh, educate our children and others on who Christ is, I think we fail. I think we really drop the ball when they ask us questions like that. That's a great opportunity to explain to them who Christ is. You know, we don't know when Jesus was born, but guess what? When he did come, he came with the intent to die for sins. Isn't that great? You know what I mean? You have the ability to flip it and turn it into a, an opportunity to go deeper with the gospel, which we should be telling them more of at a younger age than we are telling them about other stuff. Right. 
and I'm, I'm I've kind of been having this conversation with my son too. He's he's 11, um, and uh, you know he's he's a he's a very bright kid. You know he and I have had this discussion before. You know I tried to tell him about Santa Claus when he was like six. You know what I mean? And and, and people rake me over the coals and why'd you do that to that baby? Oh my God, you crazy man! You just driving the, the baby. You know, but um, you know I um. For you know many of the reasons that you uh, stated, you know I've started having that dialogue with him, and he's 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 definitely uh, very receptive. You know, um, I know when we get together with my family, they're probably gonna ask still, well, what did Santa Claus get you? You know, <laughs> uh, just like last year, and he kind of turned around and looked at me like, well, what do I say? You know, so it's cultural conditioning, y'all. Cultural conditioning. You know. Uh-huh. Hey, that's, I mean, it is what it is. It's really a, a deep thing, too, man. And I I try to make sure that I'm not so dogmatic about things like this, man, when it comes to celebrating Christmas and other stuff. I, because I think sometimes we, we, we understand how evangelical Christianity has been watered down and just made it so acceptable and palatable to everybody that anybody and mama can yell out, "Hey, I'm a Christian." You know, we we we, un- we understand we understand that aspect, and I understand the opportunity where we need to take a stand for truth and what is truth. But I also understand that sometimes we got to make sure that we're dealing with topics and with people in a level where they are able to comprehend what is going on and not condemn people because they're not at a particular place that we are. And, 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 and I do the same correlation to us who are out of the institutionalized church when at times when I know where I would condemn or come down really heavy on people who are involved with the institutionalized church system. You know, I would I would pound them and be really difficult and abrasive at times with them because they were at a different spot. And I think when we take that stand with certain topics, we got to be careful that we don't come across as just being a little bit self righteous. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's okay with me standing up for truth and saying, "Hey, I understand the pagan origins of it, origins of it, and all that." And I think we should discuss that. I think we should really educate people on it. And I think, again, that's one of the great failures of the institutionalized church is when these topics come up. Instead of us educating people, we just skirt around it, skirt around it. So now we're not celebrating Christmas. We're having a holiday festival. You know, we we take the word out of it, but we have the same – thing going on, the same thing they do for Halloween. We're not having a Halloween yeah. celebration, we're having a fall festival. Having a harvest festival. Yeah, 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 harvest festival. You're doing the same thing. All you did was try to fool people and change the name, but what you actually did, you just did the very thing that the, the enemy wants you to do in those type of situations. He wants you to not have a educated conversation about it. He would rather you bury it and skirt around it than dealing with a head-on head mm-hmm. with spirit and truth. Evan, I, I, I mean, you said something that was so profound, man. I think that we don't, if we really took the time out to examine ourselves, we could see that a lot of things and how we treat people, uh, it does come off as self right on both sides of the issue. On both sides. Whether you do celebrate it or you don't, we tend to look at somebody that's a lie. I don't know who that is. Somebody hit your mute button uh, for a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, whether you celebrate or whether you don't, and this is not saying you particularly or anybody particular, but generally speaking, we tend to look down uh, or get the self active attitude with others who do the opposite of what we do. And, and we have to get out of that. And it's time for us to examine ourselves to see if that's us. And if you find that it is, then you need to change. If nothing, you know, you need to change and, and, and accept the people for where they are. And, and that's just the bottom line. We all need to look at ourselves daily. Daily, man. Because you can't be self-righteous. And when the fact, when you get to the point where you say that you ain't self-righteous, you need to look at yourself a little hard. Because we all 
can be <laughs> self-righteous in certain ways. One way or another, we can be. And, and I think we should examine ourselves. I mean, it could be a daily thing, man. Right. That's, that's, that's part of our walk, though, bro. That's, I mean, you know, that, and that's why, again, we must continue to push. I love when Depp Shepard came on, and he was like, listen, just, just say the truth. Just, just say it. You know, it ain't, right. ain't no reason to uh, going around the back door, knocking to see and peeking in the window to see if anybody home, if they're comfortable when you're giving it to them. Just, just, just give it to them and let God do what he's going to do with it. Now, what I will say is this. There's two ways of saying something. <laughs> you, can, you can deliver it to some people on a trash can lid, or you can give it to them on some fine china. You should be aware, uh, able to acknowledge or see, eh, maybe I'm coming off a little abrasive when I say that. Maybe maybe I am coming off a little, little direct. And that's something that I myself often have to ask those who are around me. Man, when I said that, how did that sound? Well, you sounded ignorant as hell. Okay, well, I, I, you know, I got to make sure that I began to evaluate that and address it because that's not my heart. That's not what I want people to see. And again, it, self-righteousness is always right there lurking. It, it's always right there looking for an opportunity to rear his ugly head. And most times it pops up, man, and we don't even realize that we done fell into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, got a, I got another topic, so go ahead, I'll go ahead and fill in. I want people to fill in, you know, before I jump to the next topic. Uh, Tamara and, and Rob and John, y'all been kind of quiet. No, so I'm listening. I'm like, I'm, I'm listening. I, I'm with y'all. I ain't got nothing to say. Okay. I ain't get the green yet. <laughs> yeah. Rob Thorpe. <laughs> Rob Thorpe. Oh. You gonna spin? Hold on, hold on. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, bro, yeah. it is what it is, man. It comes down to next week, bro. <laughs> it sure does. Okay. God bless John? What? You got anything, man? Before I jump to this next topic? Yeah, no, go ahead. Go to the next topic. Well, wait a minute. You know what I did. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll hold you know, uh, had... uh, the Christmas tree. Go ahead, Hammer. Okay. Hammer? Okay. I, I'm, this is my question. Remember, you know I, I, I asked earlier. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Does, does, script, does scripture say that Christmas is, the scriptures say it's idolatry. That's where I'm at. I mean, I know what it is, but like somebody said, I think it was Kyra, when she was saying, you know, respect the fact of everything, and that she doesn't observe Christmas, you know, but not, not, I'm not saying Kyra did this, but do you know how many people I see on Facebook disparage those that do celebrate Christmas, you know, just just to have the gathering, just like they did with Thanksgiving. So it's funny that people say, well, don't say anything because I don't celebrate it, but yet you're going to beat everybody up that does celebrate the day. I don't, I don't get that, but... That's all I want to say. I'm done. <laughs> there is no, there is no scripture specifically speaking on any specifically. Hear me now. Specifically speaking on any aspect specifically about Christmas. It ain't nothing in there that mentions anything about the tree, the mistletoe, you know, the presents. Specifically, there's nothing mentioned in scripture regarding Christmas. Now, they, yeah. people can take you to Jeremiah, they can take you to Isaiah, they can take you to 3rd Deuteronomy. I don't care where they take you. It ain't in there. <laughs> okay? That's and we, 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 we know Deuteronomy. This. I'm just saying. Because <laughs> you know people make up scriptures. But and the okay. thing is, even with your idolatry comment, though, and here's the thing. There are places in scripture where idolatry is specifically spoken of a certain thing. It says certain things uh -huh. were idolatrous to uh, the children of Israel. It says those okay. type of things. Now, in general, it doesn't say something is idolatrous. It usually means, and it, it, you have to be able to uh, exegete it, not eisegete it, can, you know, run with it any which way you choose to. You have to be really careful with the idolatrous aspect, and I feel you with it because I'm with you. It, it doesn't say anything specifically about Christmas and many other topics that Christians tend to hold, you know, and make up. So we got to be really careful.
careful know that aspect. Okay. You, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's just one of them things. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Jonathan, because I know you're about to go down a path, which is going to be a good path for us to go. I was just going to uh, so lead talk the way, about bro. The, uh, the Christmas tree. That's it. I was going to talk about the Christmas tree. I got a Christmas tree up in my living room right now. It ain't a Charlie Brown one. It's real nice. You know, it, it does the doggone thing. We we got a tree. We decorated a tree. We had a tree. Matter of fact, I had a tree last year. Mm. Okay, okay. So, what is the big deal? Because I know Rob. Um, Rob, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Uh oh, not Rob. Um, you got issues with the Christmas tree, right? No, With Jeremiah. No, we don't. You don't. Well, no, we don't. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have a tree. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you got a tree in your house, I ain't mad at you. You know what I mean? But um, I don't. I don't put up Christmas trees. Um, and it's it's it's. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's mainly because I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't necessarily <laughs> feel like dragging no daggone tree in my in my spot. I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't give two flips about a Christmas tree. Um, However, I do understand, and this is where this is where <laughs> this is where Cameron thought I was. Terry thought I was mad at you, <laughs> but <laughs> we, it was just a lively discussion. I wasn't mad at you, but I understand. I understand where people that don't that like that that pe people that are against Christmas trees understand where they're coming from because of, and I hate to say it the pagan origins of the Christmas tree. I understand that Jeremiah, when, you know, Jer the Jeremiah uh, of chapter 10, uh, verses 2 through 5, is not specifically talking about Christmas trees because simply because of the timeline. It's impossible that it was actually addressing Christmas trees because it was so, you know, far back and way before, you know, uh, what we're talking about now. But um, this is what, when we were having the discussion, Tamara, this is what I was asking you, like, well, how do, how do we know that it wasn't adopted from that example in Jeremiah by mm -hmm. the pagans? You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. By, 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 mm -hmm. by the ones that, that do actually worship Christmas trees, you understand what I'm saying? And Mm -hmm. but not Christmas tree, but but worship actually actual tree worship. Just like there's sun worship, there's an element of of paganism that actually worships trees. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like you know we were talking earlier. The rabbit hole goes deep. So, you know, how do we know that they didn't necessarily adopt that? You know what I mean? And again, like mm -hmm. I said, if you have a Christmas tree in your crib, I ain't, I'm not tripping. I'm lazy. I don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, dragging no tree, you know what I'm saying, up, up the stairs to my spot. So that's why. That's mainly why. But, you know, where, I mean, where, where, where are we on that? I don't see anything. I'll be, I, I don't see anything wrong with the tree. I mean, I don't have a tree because I don't have children. Um, I mean, you know, I will be doing Christmas with my sister, and she got a big old pretty tree with presents under it. And just because I'm going to reach down and pick up a present doesn't mean I'm bowing down to the tree, which is what I've actually been told by people. Um, Rob, to, to your question, how do we know that it, uh, that they didn't pick up some of the, the things from Jeremiah 10? It wasn't a tree that was decorated like we know it to be a Christmas tree. They were actually carving mm -hmm. idols out of the wood is what they were doing. And they were painting Prettying, prettying the trees up. So I don't really under. I guess from my understanding, I I wouldn't even equate Jeremiah ten to a Christmas tree in any way because it specifically says that they carve idols out of the the, the wood of the tree. Um, they didn't keep the branches on it and put ornaments and all this on it. So I guess that's where I'm kind of hard pressed to understand how we can even equate that, and not not that you did it, Rob, but I've heard right. that's the premise that people use, you right. know, or the Jeremiah ten, you know, talking about the Christmas tree. They talking about the gold and the silver and the pencil. And I'm like, what? No, it's not. What do you want people for? 
I think that part huh? is kind of debatable, though. What were you saying? What? The gold oh, and silver? Purple tinsel. Purple. About what? Oh, purple tinsel. Don't, don't tinsel listen because to because it don't about purple. <laughs> oh, skip oh, skip oh, that, that, please. He a jerk. But, um, I, I don't know. Like, Sam, Sam I, I understand what you're saying, and, um, I'm really not trying to argue because there there are people that will straight argue that it's actually mm -hmm. talking about Christmas trees in Jeremiah 10 uh, verses 2 mm -hmm. and 5. But, but where I say is debatable. Somebody had that scripture that we can read it? Yeah, um, I got it. Yes, I got it too. Go ahead, uh, Chairman, you can read it. What do you want me to two read? Two, oh, no, I said what do I want? Two to four. Uh, thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. Three, for the customs of the people are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. Then decorate, they decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with the hammer and nails so that it cannot move. I'm going to go to five. Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field, and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither is it in them to do good. So, contextually speaking... How do we get a Christmas tree out of that? We don't. Or is that exegesis? Are there people That's exegesis. Scripture to get yep. a Christmas mm -hmm. tree out of that? So what is that scripture mm -hmm. really saying? It's telling you that they carved what? idols out of out of trees. They made idols. They made them look like something. It's, they pretty them up with gold and silver. It's not only saying that aspect, but if you look at verse 2, the, the, the thesis of verse 2 is right there. Thus saith the Lord, do not learn the way of the nations. It's wow. a warning for the people he's speaking to in Jeremiah not to follow the way of the nations. The it, it, it has right. nothing to do. We took, we took the tree, we took the decorating aspect, and we put it all together and mixed it with Christmas and ran with it. That scripture is speaking specifically. Do not learn the way of the nations. Don't, wow. don't follow them. Don't, don't be like them. Don't, don't, don't do what they're doing because they are people, are delusions. For the custom of the peoples are delusions. Because it, it's not speaking of wow. the trees. And I, listen, I'm, I'm not knocking anybody for standing against and saying there is pagan roots of Christmas. I, I, I'll acknowledge that. I think we all can agree. Uh -huh. But what none of us uh -huh. can say is, by looking at Scripture properly with the right hermeneutics, that we can find any verse in the Bible that is speaking specifically against people celebrating Christmas as we know it. Right? Can we all agree on that? I can. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, I can. And, and, and again, because mm -hmm. I, I, I know there's Christians who are listening, and they're going to be mm -hmm. up in arms with this, and they're going to make all these passive-aggressive statuses and all this uh -huh. weak, spineless stuff instead of directly come out and saying, them fools on Real Talk Radio said this, they're going to go behind the back door on some real subliminal, subconscious, kind of corny type stuff. We're not stating that this holiday does not have pagan origins. We agree. But you cannot look at people in their face and lie to them and say, well, it's right there in the Bible. It's, and it's not. That's not. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why I've heard. I think people uh, get hung up on it is <clears throat> because of and you guys did a show on it because of the translation. Because oh. if you look at it, if you look at it in, in the King James version, it reads slightly different. Slightly different. I'm not. I'm not a, I'm not a King James only person, um, but I'm just, what I'm saying is, I, 
that's how I think that a lot of people that have taken the Christmas tree from, and, and, and even when, uh, Tamara, when you and I were having this discussion, one thing we agreed on was that, well, hey, this was so many years before, you know, and I, I said this earlier, so many years before uh, Christmas, per se, that it couldn't have been actually addressing a Christmas tree. You see what I'm saying? So, so we all agree on that, but I think how people dug that out is because of the translation, because it says um, in mm -hmm. the King James Version, um, let's see, let's see, learn out the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the sign of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. <clears throat> for the customs of the people are vain, just like we, you were pointing out, Elgin, for one cut up the mm -hmm. tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. Mm -hmm. All right, so mm -hmm. I can see, I can see where that actually says both both it actually makes both points actually. Um, so we have to mm -hmm. you know properly exegete this particular mm -hmm. that particular. Do y'all do y'all see what I'm saying? Like oh yeah, okay. I, I uh, don't. Just I'm a little bit. For here. I'm like, what if you what if you could use that to say somebody chopping down a Christmas tree, just that what you read and say, what if I'm chopping it down from firewood? And, and, and I, I, see where, I see where you're going with it, Rob. I do. But here's the okay. thing that I want you to think of, and those who are going to use the KJV reason as for them to say, it's in there. Think about the origins of the KJ, KJV. Think about whose hands was all over. What would they have to gain? or to profit by using that to tie into Christmas. Hence the word Christ Mass. If you look at yeah. it, that, that, that just, it, it just it would line perfectly up with their agenda to have that verse to read Christmas tree. Right, right. But just think right, about this, right. too. Also, what about uh, a German Bible? The Bible mm -hmm. is translated into German or Japanese, or Chinese, or Korean, or Spanish. What, right. What about that? Does that say Christmas tree, or anything like that? It's right. a translation. And I don't want to, I don't want to turn this into another, because you guys did an entire show on translations, and I don't want to necessarily uh, turn this into another translation discussion. And oh, wrong with it, bro. And That's fine. Right. Under, no, understand it. I'm not bumping heads. I'm just saying that I, I can see where, uh, because I know people that say, no, in the KJV, it's talking about Christmas trees. You know what I mean? Because it's all, they're all over Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I can, I, reading that part in the KJV, because it, it reads slightly different in the ESV. I think, Tamara, were you reading from ESV earlier? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, because I, I was following along in my ESV. But I can... I, I can see where, because I know people, I know people personally, man, you know, Jeremiah King, he's talking about Christmas trees specifically, <laughs> you know, and I can, and I'm looking at it, and, and, and you made a very good point, Elgin, you got to consider, you just got to consider, you got to consider, gotta consider the, the origins and the agenda, and it goes along with, um, now really, if, we, if we're going to consider that, we, I mean, it, it kind of goes along with, uh, you know, Christ Mass and all of that type of stuff, so. It's, it's almost it can almost turn into a circular argument. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could go we could we could go on till midnight debating this and still won't be finished. You know. Um, yeah. So hey, it, it, it goes. It, it points it, it points out something very critical, man. That I think that we have to notice. Also, we can create an argument from any verse of scripture. If there's not a verse of scripture that we the, 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 the five of us right now, you know, can create a doctrine on. We can, we can pull any dog on scripture and create a doctrine that people would be, and just be so enthusiastic about it, be, look at this, look, 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 and create a doctrine and, and be able to stand upon it. But I think the one beautiful thing is, man, that we, we're able to be able to have this discussion all knowing that we're one body, one faith, one Lord. We're on the same page with that aspect, and we understand that 
Christmas and those who celebrate it, it's a secondary issue. That's, that's, it's just, it, it's not a salvation issue. It, it, okay, well, let me be clear. In my eyes, <laughs> for your boy, celebrating Christmas is not a salvation issue. If you choose to celebrate Christmas, your salvation is not in question. You, you, you know, you're still getting in if you decide to put some, some gifts underneath the tree and, and, and invite Santa to your crib. That, that's, Jesus ain't going to kick you out of the kingdom for that. So let me ask you, ask you this question. You know, cause, you know, we're talking about it, Jeremiah. You're talking about they came and they worshipped that tree. How do you worship a Christmas tree? Hmm. According to some people, you, you, you bow down. How do you worship? Present. Because in worship, I mean, you have to, I mean, worship is deep, man. It's like you're paying focal attention to this thing, and you bow down to it. You're offering sacrifices to this tree. You know what I'm saying? So how do you worship? A tree, a Christmas tree. I, I was and, and I'm not trying to be funny. No, I'm asking a serious question. Like how, okay, you know, just a we, Christian, we, as a sure. Christian, with the Christmas tree, how do you worship? How would you worship? Or people who, who say that Jeremiah 10 is speaking of Christmas trees, how would a modern-day Christian with the Christmas tree in their house, how would you say let, 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 that they are worshiping the Christmas tree? You gonna let us answer now, or are you? I'm gonna let Rob answer. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> hey, <dude. laughs> hey Rob, we love you, though, dog. Let me tell you, we love you. Cause I mean, <laughs> 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 love y'all too, man. I love y'all too. Hey, hey, dude. I, <laughs> I don't Rob know how to worship no dad no tree, man. <laughs> say, say you don't know how? I said Rob the man with the hey, dude. Listen, dude. <laughs> hey, bro. No, I mean, <laughs> okay. The, the abstract of that, the ab, the abstract of that is something that you know Tamra was trying to uh, allude to it. Um, the way people, you know, they'll have the tree, and and I I think this is abstract. They'll have they'll have the tree in their house, and they actually have to physically, you know bend over, and this is this is what I've heard, bend over and put, you know, gifts under it, and it symbolizes, like, uh, you know, sacrifices and all of that type of stuff. Um, we were chatting about it, you know, um, in Facebook chat earlier. I was saying, and it doesn't really have anything to do with Christmas, but people, there, there's an element of paganism that they do – worship trees i mean i don't i try not to when i'm researching i try not to it, it, you know how you have to kind of like not get too deep into that stuff before you start sitting there you know reading all types of books about you know how to do this that and the third um you know pagan worship or whatever but you know doing my you know kind of surface research on that that's what i've heard so i people will abstract that into saying that um well, with the Christmas tree, you know, you're bending over and you're putting gifts under it, and it's, it's an act of sacrifice and all this, that, and the third. So I don't know because, like I said, I don't, I, don't, I don't have a Christmas tree, and it's not really because of the reason per se. It's now, I, 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 got a, I got a question real quick. Now, if the word says that God said they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, right? Mm-hmm. That's the only way you can worship God, right? right? So if I'm bending down, getting the present out of the tree, and my and, and I'm not worshiping my, I'm not in spirit and truth when I'm thinking about that tree. Am I not worshiping that tree, or am I worshiping that tree because I simply bent down and picked up a present? You just bending down, picking up your present. You know, my heart's not in that in any worship. Mm-hmm. Spirit of truth is connected to that tree. So right. is that really worship? It's not. When we worship God, we worship Him in spirit and truth. I believe it's really worship. No, I, I don't. I don't, I don't think it's worship, really other worship. Idols, but here's. I was going to say, I, I when, when people worship I, I other think idols. That's just, again, it lines up to what a lot of a lot of Christians do, man. That what the perception sends, you know, they perceive and they assume because a person is doing a particular thing that they also have to be doing another thing 
you know, yeah. kind of like the whole shacking thing, you know, folks living together, they got to be doing something else. No, because I bent over and had to get underneath the tree to plug the lights in. You know, it was kind of difficult because my tree is a little low to the ground. I'm kind of tall, so I had to bend over several times. Was I worshiping the tree? No, I was just trying <laughs> to plug the dog on thing in. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, and then when you, the, the, decorate, the decorating of the tree, the time spent, that's worshiping the tree, too, is what they say. Huh. Wow. So do you uh, uh, worship yourself when you can decorate yourself in the morning? Do you decorate yourself? Mm-hmm. Put your clothes on. Put your makeup on, women. You put your jewelry on. You just took a shot at me. I think they heard you, too. Go we, we got callers, man. We got callers. They're lying. Take callers. Let's yeah. get these callers. Call us from area code 312. 312. You are live on Real Talk Radio. What's your comment? And what's your name, too? Uh, it's LL, brothers and sister Tamara. Um, what's up? What's good, bro? No, I'm, I'm pretty much saying the same thing that you guys are saying. Um, all relevant points were made to the the ideal of bowing down to a tree and worshiping it, I just find that very uh, crazy. Um, that in in a sense of, I don't know who just said, uh, Tamra giving the scriptures uh, in Jeremiah 10, the second portion I wanted to tie into is that, again, what you were just talking about, the worshiping of it. We don't put trees up in wherever they may have them or carve idols out of them, you know, walking around like, hey, dog, look at my Christmas tree, like, you know, how gangsters wear their chains around their necks. Right. Perfect, but it's doing it that way. And just boldly giving themselves over to people like, if you ain't, you know, saying decorated with gold and silver, like, I got it. Yeah, well, it ain't Christmas. So, like, I just don't get how people can take this, these uh, verses, 1 through 10 especially, and make them into a Christmas thing. We, we decorate a lot of stuff. We decorate our houses. We decorate our cars. We decorate clothing. But awesome. we're not worshiping it. But when it comes to Christmas, and just this holiday in particular, uh, we make it the most paganistic thing that one could ever do, including Christians, and therefore you're going to hell if you continue in it. Mm. Mm. I feel you. Wow. We decorate a lot of stuff, but we don't find that it's pagan. We decorate ourselves with gold and silver, right? You decorate your house. Didn't I say that already? Yeah. 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 We just ignore you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Any more comments, LL? I pretty much just wanted to share that. It's right on point with what y'all were going into. All right. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Thanks for checking in Bye-bye. with us, man. All right. Eric Code 317-317. You are uh, live. Eric Codes. 317. 317? Going once. Hello. Going right. twice. What's up? Oh, I'm kidding. You better like try chicken, too. All right. This is my, my question. My, my only question is, what Bibles or what Bible should I study from? It's not King James. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, mean, yeah. I, I personally, mean. I study from different <laughs> versions. I use King James, New King James, uh, New Living Translation, and, and I think it's NASB. I study from different Bibles. Yes. Are, you, are you looking to, to have a, a specific Bible <laughs> to do your devotions with, or what are you looking for specifically? I think we can better answer the I'm question not that any, way. I'm not looking for anything in specific except to learn the truth. And this is Doreen exactly. Potter from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, Bless you. Uh, not fail. Come on. I know I, um, my hey, Miss Potter. Hey, baby. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm truly a novice from coming from an apostolic faith, learning Ooh. the truth. Uh-oh. And oh, I'm always read King James Version, but now that I am of the truth, I, I put both of my Bibles side by side, and were, and I was reading along with you uh, in Jeremiah, and I can yes. see how I was at one time confused, but now I see. 
So I need mm -hmm. to know what Bibles can I use so I won't be blinded all the time when there are conversations and postings that I may or may not answer properly if I'm on yeah. Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let me... Well, I was, I was just going to say that there is no Bible that you're going to be able to find that's going to make sure that you always have the truth. And the reason no, why I, I say that is... Always, I, want, I want to know other... See, listen real carefully. Apostolic, they use one Bible. I need to know the name. I tell you what, just, just send me a little posting on Facebook because I'm on there 24-7 if I'm not asleep. Mm -hmm. That's B. Potter, Doris Potter at gmail.com. I don't have a problem with it, but what I need to know is other than, other than, I, other than auntie, that's it. You, so, and, Auntie, you, you're into your King James. Now, we've talked about this before. Now, this is what I do. I will use online Bibles, and uh -huh. I'll look at everything. I, I mean, there's Bible Hub. This Bible Gateway, it has every version. Yeah, in the inner line, it has every version, and they will read differently, but, I, you know, most of them are to under, understand. Now, what you have to do, and I've said this, you have to seek the Holy Spirit for understanding. That's, he opens it up for us. So just reading the Bible is okay, but you need to be yeah. opened up. I know, but... I, I've never, I've never been so enthused in finding um, the other the truth. Yeah, the truth. so I know. It's just that yeah. I can, I can read a book in a day. So mm -hmm. I, I'm starting the Bible for the second time this year, mm -hmm. and yeah. and mm -hmm. I'm and I'm stuck now in Proverbs. But if I can read a different Bible that can give me different insight. I'll purchase that Bible because all I have in my house is King James. Okay. Well, I'll send the link. I'll send you some Bibles. Um, I'll text them to your phone, as a matter of fact, or I can email them, but I'll make sure that you have them. Okay. And I've, been, I've enjoyed this uh, whole show, and I will be listening in the next time I'll, I'll punch in. Oh, and, I can, but, and, and, and these guys that are on here, they're good, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're good connects to have as well. They're very good teachers, so you may want to, you know, look at their names and then send them from because they're they're really good teachers. I trust them. It, I don't know if you would rob already, but yeah, that's my auntie guy. Well, as soon as I got most of the names written down, I'll go back and look for them. I have okay. I have pages and pages of notes from the night, so I'll go back and look for their names. Thank okay. you, everyone. Okay. Be blessed. Thank you. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh, oh. Before you go, there was we did a show yes. on Bible translations. Oh, we'll send you. Okay. We'll send you the link for it. We'll make sure you right. get you the link. We'll get it for you Thank tonight. You so Tamara, much. send it to you. Okay. Bless you. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Doris. Tamara, I like it. Uh, caller from the eight four eight eight four eight. You are live. Who do we have on the line with us this evening? Hi. 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 Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Did you, did you Hi. Sure you Hi, I called in a little <laughs> late. <laughs> um, I just uh, learned a little bit about this Christmas tree thing um, probably about a month ago or so. So I have a pretty good idea what you're talking about, and I just tuned in probably about, uh, let's see, what time is it, 20 minutes ago? <laughs> I um I thought the uh, show started at ten this morning, and John kindly uh, um, messaged me on Facebook just a few minutes ago. So I'm trying to catch up here, and I'm rereading this scripture over here and trying to remember what I got out of it um, a while ago. Um, what I have to say is is I guess every year. Um, since I've become a Christian, um, that's saved, I guess would be the best way to put it, is every year Christmas has gotten a little bit different from me. Um, uh, little by slowly, um, you know, just things start disappearing. 
my heart changes on different things. I guess, you know, the Lord's just doing, like, little works. I don't know why or whatever. Just things disappear. And then um, I read some, you know, comments about this, that, and the other thing. Um, and I guess the legal the legalism in it um, with the Christmas tree bothers me. And... Um, However, it seems to me it takes the focus off Jesus. Like, the argument itself, by trying to, to twist the scripture into making it a, that scripture about the Christmas tree itself, rather than the, the full the full un understanding about the idol, uh, you know, carving the idols out of the wood. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it could be, I guess it could be applied to the Christmas tree if somebody was actually worshiping their Christmas tree. Yeah. Perhaps. Possibly. But, but I, I have my tree up. I didn't really decorate it this year, you know, but I just put it up. Um, you know, just, but uh, there wasn't a lot of distractions and, and things like that, but, um, you know, then it goes into, I have a two-year-old, it's, you know, what do we tell her about Santa? I mean, you know, it, it goes into all these other things. It's like, I don't really want her to even believe in Santa, yet, you know, my whole family you know, they go, oh, is Santa coming? Is Santa coming? It's like, well, so what we decided just was that, well, that's their relationship with her. I'm not promoting, I'm not promoting that. So let them have their relationship, and when she's old enough to ask questions, I'm just going to tell her the truth. You know, maybe a few years down the road, we won't have a Christmas tree just because. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to believe by then. But, I mean, that's really all I have to comment. I just wanted to listen, you know, listen in on the show and um, hear what everybody had to say. I don't have a lot to comment about it. It's just really that it's a, a um, the people keep arguing about it and somebody, you know, wants to sit there and um, have these large, you know, these mega opinions or legalistic views about it, it just seems like it's taking off the focus on Jesus is where it should be. Mm -hmm. and, um, gotcha. You know what I mean? And, and getting in these, in these yeah. long winded arguments about it, I mean, I, I believe it's in somewhere, I think it might even yes. be, yeah, um, arguments about it. Um, back and forth, back and forth. I can't think it even says it somewhere in the Bible. Like, you shouldn't even really be um, doing the back and forth stuff about it and not to get um, involved too much with that kind of thing. Yeah. Because you really should be out, you know, doing the stuff. You know, doing, you know, preaching the gospel and, you know, loving on people sure. rather than... You know, because that's what he came here for. He he reached right. those, those those people. Mm. So, I mean, that's really all I got um, to say. Oh man, we thank you oh, for I calling in the talk about right that. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Jonathan. Da -da 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 -da. All right. All right. <laughs> So, um, he always do that. You know what I mean? He he always dip off to have a neck mm -hmm. bone sandwich at the wrong dog on time. <laughs> he can not wait. He can wait till after the show. Go ahead, John. I was gonna ask Rob, do you have a Christmas tree yet? No, he already answered that. Who? Been listening. Who me? Mm -hmm. Nah, bro. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we yeah we talked about that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Have, I don't have a Christmas tree. Uh -uh. You got one? You got one? Yeah, I got one. You know I got this. a live Christmas tree, too. Wow, oh, you're really an idolater <laughs> now, bro. Huh? Yeah, I got a tree. 
present um, under and everything. Now he wasn't trying to show back up like he was listening. I mean, man, you know, listen. Like, so he was involved with the conversation. He was gonna come back in. <laughs> <laughs> and like nobody noticed he wasn't listening. <laughs> Everybody knew that you stepped away. Just say it. Yeah, know that. Because it was silent for like 30 seconds after she got talking to talking. We was like, Jonathan? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what y'all was talking about? See, see how you trying to play it off? No, we was talking about the tree, man. We were just following up and finishing what she was saying, uh, which was a lot. And we were just dealing with that aspect. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, let me... Honestly, the only reason I got a tree is because I got kids. I'm telling you, right. I, I would not have no tree if I didn't have if my children. You know, I have a five year old and a ten year old and a fifteen year old. They all five years apart. And you know, my fifteen year old, she is actually a Jehovah's Witness. Well, her mama is Jehovah's Witness, so you know she likes to be over my house for birthdays and holidays and stuff like that, which she is. Um, and so that's really the only reason. Because I, I could care less about a Christmas tree, honestly. I really didn't want to get one, but, you know, my kids love it, and I did it for them, not for me. Not because of any religious duty or anything, just because I got kids, and I want them to be happy. And it's not a sin in it. So, you know, that's where I'm at. You heard? All right. And you beat up on people. Boy, listen. Because I know people are sitting back saying, oh, man, they just beating up on people about Christmas. No, we're not. If you want to celebrate Christmas, I will forward you my address so you can send me a gift. And we can celebrate it together. It's okay. Yeah. We're not beating up on anybody who has a tree, who doesn't have a tree. Man, listen, if you want to have a tree, have a tree. If you don't want to have a tree, that's okay. Yeah. Right. Jesus is still on the throne. He still came, lived, died, and rose, and he's coming back. Go ahead, yeah, Go ahead it goes, Rob. That goes without saying, man, what you were just saying. I mean, you know, um, the focus is on Jesus all the time. So having this discussion is healthy. Um, you know, it, it's it's good to dialogue about this. It's not because I know the sister that just called was saying, you know, um, it's taking the focus off of Jesus. Well, no, I mean, I, I don't totally agree with that because I mean, we, we focus on Jesus all of the time. To have this discussion, it goes back to when we even opened the show. I mean, we're talking about again, we we we're, we're talking about the origins. We're talking about the traditions, whether or not they're based in scripture, whether or not they're, you know, biblical, um, that's what the discussion is about. But when we open the show, we acknowledge, and I think we all agree, that mm -hmm. because of that, Jesus wasn't in Christmas to begin with. We're talking about a man-made, you know, holiday. So... I don't think it's we, – we can't really say it's taking the focus off of him. I mean, we're, we're united right here in the name of Jesus. We're talking, you know, having this discussion, and, and we're, we're – you, you know, better preach Jesus for it. You understand what I'm saying? But um, it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, Jesus was never in Christmas in the first place. It's a – it's a man-made holiday, uh, you know, man-made tradition, and, you know, a lot of the traditions surrounding it. Um, are definitely you not going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think you know can come back to I think uh, she brought up the term legalism, and I think we can be uh, legalists and we can sometimes be hyper literalists in our thinking mm -hmm. when it comes to certain things in the scriptures, um, and, and this is not a uh, uh, do as yeah. God will. Yeah. You know, it's not one of them things. But it's, it's you have the freedom in Christ, and God will not be displeased with you whether you celebrate Christmas or not. Now we have Sister Kara. She called in. I kind of disagree with her a little bit. Um, you know, asked the question. So we celebrate Jesus every other day except December 25th. And I don't understand that mindset. But that's her freedom. 
that she has in Christ to do that. And anybody has that freedom in Christ to celebrate him whenever you want to. One man faces one day above another. Another man faces another day. Uh, for me, I celebrate it every day. And like I said in the onset of the show, I don't see Christmas, I don't see Jesus in Christmas at all. That's just Jonathan's opinion. I celebrate Christmas because of the bonding and the fellowship I can have with my family. I celebrate Jesus every day of the year. Every day. 365 days a year, even on Christmas, December 25th. So I don't exclude any day for me to celebrate Jesus. I do it every day. Now I might not be with gifts and all this stuff and Christmas tree, but I celebrate him every day. So, I mean, December 25th is not an exclusion for me, or the season is not an exclusion for me to say I'm not going to celebrate it because we have turned it pagan. But that's just me. We didn't turn it pagan. It was, it was pagan to begin with. That's why I say right, we, right. Uh -huh. we're, 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 we're the day. Right. Okay, I got you. Because, yeah, when we choose, okay. to, again, it's, that's why I was saying when we choose to talk about it, it's inevitably going to go down that path. And, you know, we have to kind of acknowledge it. That's why I say I understand where Sister Kyle was coming from. And I, I'm not mad at her for not celebrating Christmas, you know, in any way, shape, or form, just like I'm not, you know, I'm not mad at anybody that does. I mean, you know, who am I to, you know, uh, cast somebody into hell, you know what I'm saying, for this, that, and the third. I'm not mad at somebody that chooses to celebrate Christmas. Because, I mean, like I said, even I'm going to be with my family. It's it's cultural conditioning. It's 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 uh, it's tradition. I mean, I'm going to be with my family on the 25th, you know, and, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, like I said, I'm not mad at anybody that, that, that chooses to celebrate it. But I think where Kyra was coming from, um, was that, and, and and even Tamara was, was bringing it up when she was talking about Christ mass and everything. It just, it re again, it can, it, it can be a circular, this is, it can be circular logic because we, we're going to inevitably turn back around to the origins of some of these traditions, the origins of the holiday, the origins of, you know, um, the aspects of Christmas that definitely never had anything to do with Christ, but had everything to do with pagan gods and paganism and things like that. And we really didn't get too far down, you know, uh, definitively about that. But, I mean, you know, we put it out there. Um, so mm -hmm. what I would say is everybody that's listening, that's like pagan gods, what are you talking about? I mean, you know what you have to do now? Now you have to be a Berean. Now you have to do your yeah, research. Sure. You know, now you have to really do your research and then make your decision, you know, prayerfully, you know, based on um, your research and uh, and um, the Holy Spirit revealing, you know, things to you, whether or not you're going to celebrate Christmas. You know, that's I think that's where, again, I'm going to have to speak up for my sister. I think that's where she's saying, you know, when you know better, you do better. Um, so... That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, people, if you listen to this and you're still not, you know, like, what are y'all talking about? Do your research. Just look up the origins of Christmas. It may shock you. Some of it may shock you. And if you celebrate it, you're going to hell. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, I see what you're saying. All right. Let's, let's I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying that. I don't have the power to put anybody in hell. Listen, I'm being facetious. Believe me. I, I don't think you don't. said it or Kyrie. I don't think anybody was implying that at all. Yeah. Right. Closing right. words, last words, because we got it. We're going to short on time. Last words. Uh, last words. Wait. Sister Tamara, last off. words. Yeah. I can't give last words. Um, <laughs> um, I would just say that um, I don't believe that um, it is wrong to celebrate today because you would any other day. As long as you know that it's not Jesus Christ's birthday, and like I always say, me and my sisters don't cook, talk, eat, sleep, wake up, and do it all over again. And to me, that's what it's all about. It's all about the gathering um, and the coming together uh, with me and my family. That's what Christmas is for me. All right. Uh, John, first twin, last words. Um, last words be my first words. 
Uh, if you choose to celebrate it, then do so. If you don't choose to celebrate it, then don't. Um, and Merry Christmas. Ooh. See, there you go, boys. Belgian Bailey. Oh, not, it's okay now? It's okay. Bishop. It's okay now? Hail Sharpton. <laughs> Love y'all, man. I hope y'all have a happy holiday. Enjoy all the watch night services that y'all want to be attending. <laughs> make sure you make, make, make your black eyed peas and all that type stuff. And enjoy the holiday. Enjoy your family. Model Christ during the holidays. Don't be so evil. You heathen. Mm. Brother Rob, <laughs> Eagles fan. Hey, man. We're taking the NFC East, man, first of all. Santa Claus is going to bring you out a, champ, a division championship. Hey, man, Santa Claus come through here. He's going to get a, well, anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, hey, look, you know the history of Eagles fans of Santa Claus anyway. Um, yes, you know. <laughs> you know so, right, look, go ahead. Right, right, right. <laughs> nah, man, I mean, um, I hate this at the end of the show. Like I said, we could have gone all night, man, but, you know, Hey, do your research, man. Just like El just said, just enjoy your family. Just, just you know, keep Christ the center of everything. That's that's pretty much the bottom line. Um, enjoy your family. Be safe. You know, you know, I love you. God loves you. You know, these guys love you. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Just 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 research it and be prayerful about it. Right. Uh, my last thought, this is Jonathan. Uh, you know, we talk about pagan this, pagan that, and I would be the first to say that there, a Christmas as we know it is founded in pagan roots, but there are a lot of other things, especially if you are still in church, uh, that are from pagan. Did you even know that tithing in its origins was, was pagan? Did you know that? Yep. Um, yep. Even, mm, a sure lot of stuff that, we do, that you do in a church building is from the church building itself. The word church is oh, pagan. If you do the research on it, you would know mm-hmm. that. The word church yep. itself is pagan. Um, come from circle, uh, seriously. I mean, it, it, it is research it. Um, the pews, the even the dress and what people wear, uh, you know, these, these collars and these priestly robes and all this stuff, it is pagan in origin. So there's a lot of pagan stuff that, that happens. Um, that we don't research, and if you find out, you probably wouldn't stop. And this is for those who still attend the institutional church just to look at these things. Um, but I say, if you like everybody else said, if you want to celebrate it, celebrate it. If you don't, then don't. But be careful of being self-righteous in how you approach or how you view those who do it the opposite the way that you do it. Um, Romans right. 14, I mean, I, I will read that uh, each each of you uh, make up in your own mind. God won't be displeased with you whether you celebrate it or not. And that's my opinion. That's my because I ain't God. I can't say that, and I ain't nobody holy ghost. So that's it. Um, let me pray, Father. We thank you for another day. Thank you for allowing us to come together to have this discussion. Father, with no animosity towards one another, no anger. Father God, we can come and just discuss these things as brethren and sister. And yes, I made that word, sister in Christ. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, sister, is something I, I just made that up. <laughs> it's sister, you like to go to brethren. But if this is the first time listening to Real Talk Radio, we do air every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can catch on YouTube, uh, www.youtube.com forward slash 4 Real Talk Radio. You can also email us. That's what I'm going to say to y'all. You know that, right? At gmail.com. The outro says all that. Interrupting us, and we'll be okay. Um, the outro just so says all that for you. you know. Thank you. Thank you. Stop, I appreciate man. you. Elder. I'm just saying, you, you. I'm just telling you, ask you to be quiet. You killed us with a diatribe. Come on, bro. So, you know, we got like Kill 60 us. seconds left. Join us. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I just I'm played that up there, Elgin. Why did you just play the outro? No. So this is guys next Sunday. Uh, we don't know what the topic is going to be yet. Uh, let's see, I'm working on that. We might talk about the watch night service, so, I mean, we don't know. Easy. Uh, Bring your first fruits. Bring your first fruits offering yeah, the watch night service. First fruits. Oh, please do not even. I want to hear about that. <laughs> I was like, maybe we talk about first fruits, but we'll be talking about dominionism again here pretty soon. Dominionism. If you don't know it, Google it. Or uh, check us out on YouTube. We got the first Dominion show. So thank you guys. We appreciate you. We love you. This is Real Talk Radio. We out. Hey. Thank you for checking out this episode of Real Talk Radio. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Or drop us a line at 4realtalkradio at gmail.com. That's the number four, realtalkradio at gmail.com. Man, send your comments, concerns, criticisms, or show ideas. We would love to hear from you. Till next week, we out.